strongest gym in the north. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, elbow tendonitis, which is a pretty common thing, especially in the sport of powerlifting. Uh, some bodybuilders also get it, and also a lot of guys playing racket sports get it as well. Golfers, tennis players, softball, baseball, uh, and even some throwing sports um, will get elbow tendonitis. But for guys like us and girls like uh, the girls that are involved in powerlifting and doing a lot of pressing, then this is a real common problem and uh, I've got a few little things that will help you get, uh, get to alleviate some of the pain and discomfort and allow you to keep training on through and um, even get, sort of get rid of the elbow tendonitis to give you periods where you won't suffer from a, uh, this horrible affliction at all. So first of all, um, pre-training, uh, there's a couple of things I like to do. Um, unfortunately, uh, these can't always be implied in competition but uh, you can use elbow sleeves. These are just a pair of simple McDavid uh, elbow sleeves. You're available here in New Zealand from, uh, say, Rebel or Sterling or someone like that. Um, I prefer the elbow sleeve without the hole in the, uh, for the elbow to poke through. I don't know what that hole is actually for an elbow sleeve. It's not like your elbow has a patella, like a knee, so it doesn't need any sort of tracking uh, guidance. But um, these are very simple. If you don't want to spend any money on something like elbow sleeves, then you can go and uh, steal your sister's wetsuit and cut the knee pads out of it. So that's, a, that's one good thing. These uh, basically help keep the muscle warm and uh, attract blood flow to the tendons. And um, tendons being uh, sort of uh, the connection points for muscle onto the bone, um, don't typically get a lot of blood because the muscle around uh, the particular tendon, all that joint, uh, is like a sponge and soaks up the blood. Therefore, uh, you need to keep the area warm to attract blood flow to the tendon. Okay, I'll talk more about that in a minute as well. So there's these. You can also use a product like uh, Qualium um, Q-Rub. I particularly like this one. It's got cool, it's sort of a cool burn. You don't know whether you're on fire or whether you're getting chilled down with this stuff. It's fantastic. It's, um, it's a thin paste. It's concentrated, so it goes a long way. Um, I am giving this a bit of a plug because Qualium is one of our sponsors. But not only that, it is a very good product. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that it's better than deep heat, and it's better than a lot of those deep heat type products as well, which tend to be uh, more topical than getting into, you know, um, deeper down. This stuff feels like it goes in deeper. I'm not saying it's transdermal, but it does feel like it goes in deeper. What I do is I put a, about a thumbnail on, so it's not a lot, so the little tin like this for 40 bucks goes a long way. Rub that into the area, slip my elbow sleeve over the top, and I'm good as gold for it two or three hours, no problem at all. Okay, that's pre-training. During training, um, if things are starting to get a bit painful, there's a few stretches that I like to adopt, and these are probably gonna be a little hard to capture on camera, but one of them is what I call the retard stretch, and what you do is you turn your hands inside out, if you can just focus on those for a second there, turn your hands inside out, and you'll feel them stretching the forearms in various places, along through the tendons and up through the muscle, uh, points through here and uh, and if you want to add some more stretch to that it's like swinging your hamstrings and this is why I call it the retard stretch it's not very PC at all anyway but who gives a shit you stand at the bus stop and just move into the bus okay and that doing that and keeping the arms straight actually puts quite a bit more stretch on it so that's one of the stretches I recommend another one is uh, putting the hands flat on the bench and then leaning over them to change the angle so you're actually leaning the forearm up over and stretching out all the uh, tendons and ligaments and muscles through the forearm, front and back, so you can stretch with the, with the palm down and you can stretch with the palm um, facing up and, and leaning over backwards over the, um, over the hand. Another thing that's really good at getting, uh, getting right into the deep part of the tendonitis is using the ball, and we've talked about the ball before when we talked about my facial release and stuff like that, and there's a whole world of stuff like this at uh, mobilitywod.com. I think it's uh, Kelly Sterrett's website. Very, very useful website. And uh, pretty much the stuff that I've been showing you here is stuff that I've, I've got off there, off other sites as well. So, uh, and stuff that we've adapted a little bit, which I'll show you with my stick uh, and my bands. Um, get the ball or a screwdriver handle or something that's got a nice big round end on it and get it right into where the tendonitis is and just really drive that ball around. Don't be afraid to lean into it. This ball's a little big for it, but I'm using it so you can see what I'm doing. Just work that cold area right up. If you find a sore area, put even more pressure on it, hold it down, 
and you actually feel it release. Um, the tissue will separate the tissue away a wee bit. And you just keep working that around. I recommend that probably 15 minutes, um, two or three times a week, each elbow. Okay, the stick is another good one, and I particularly like this one. You just grab, uh, we use these broomsticks for some mobility work and uh, dislocations and also for teaching things like a snatch squat or whatever. Get the stick, throw your leg over the top of it so you've got a bit of downwards pressure on it. And then for, say, a uh, forearm area here where I particularly suffer is down through this part of the tendon, I just get that so it's nice and accessible. Rest my leg on the stick and I just roll through like this. But you can use a dumbbell handle, you can use uh, old manner of stuff that's lying around the end of a barbell, whatever you like. I like this stick because it's small diameter, it's a small muscle group, and I'm also covering quite a large area um, with just a few rolls. And I reckon 10 to 15 rolls like that, give yourself a little breather because it does hurt, move on to the next area that needs it. And get right in there, long sweeps with the roll with the roll of the stick. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about now is bands and how to use those for like prehab. Prehab is like rehab if you do it before you get injured. And uh, you can see here I've got a couple of bands uh, looped over the top of the power cage. Let's get one out of the way for now. We'll start with a light band, just a red band. Uh, there's not a lot of weight on this. It's um, you know, probably at full stretch you might get 15, 20 kilos out of it. But we're not worried about that. We're not building any muscle here. What we're trying to do is flood the area with blood. And uh, blood carries in um, all the nutrients and carries out all the waste products. So, the idea is with this red band is to do about 200 press downs, 2 to 300, 300 is a good number, and just do these, pressing down the whole time, keep them nice and strict, pump them out, get into a bit of a groove. Once you get really good at this, you're getting 200 out in a, in a, a single um, set, you might probably want to swap bands, you have a slightly heavier band, like a blue band, do the same thing, I'm working with these out, pump them away, fill that elbow up with blood, Again, the blood carrying all the good nutrients, taking away all that terrible waste product. Give it a go. Stay from Coast Barbell, strong strip of the north.